75% layout with the knob is one of the most popular amongst newcomers to the hobby. The Keychron Q1, GMMK Pro, and a couple others have been dominating the space with quality boards at an affordable price, but it's time for them to take a big step back. The QK75 is the best 75% keyboard under $200 that I have personally reviewed. If this is your first dip into the custom keyboard world, watch the whole video and I'll guide you through the build. Now you can purchase the QK75 bare bones kit, which comes with everything you need, minus the keycaps and switches, or the QK75 bundle, which will include both of those as well. Inside of the bare bones kit, you'll get the case with an external stainless steel weight and a red brass internal weight. I was really shocked to see brass at this price. It gives the board some heft coming in just under five pounds fully built, and it helps with the overall sound signature. You can also select a tri-mode hotswap PCB that supports wired and Bluetooth mode, as well as the ability to connect via a 2.5 gigahertz receiver. So that's three different modes that you can choose from to connect to your device. Two batteries will also be included and will be pre-installed under the internal weight. The PCB is also where the QK75 really differentiates itself from the other QK boards. This time they went with gaskets that install directly to the PCB instead of the plate. I'll go over this in just a bit. You also get all of the foams that QK is known for, and you can select to go with either a badge or a rotary knob. They offer them as extras, so you can pick from whatever you want. Just know that the board does come with the rotary encoder included, and if you choose to go with the badge, pick up an extra knob just in case you decide to change things up a bit. Owl stabs are also included as a gift, along with the carrying case, tools, coiled cable, and more. So yeah, this board comes with a ton for it to start at only $180. And with this layout and price point, I believe this may be the perfect keyboard for someone entering the hobby. Now for those that are new, let me walk you through how to assemble the QK75. The first thing you want to do is prepare your stabilizers. Now there's some really good videos out there already that I'll link in the description if you need help with how to do this. Now pro tip, if you're wondering which way the stabilizer goes in the PCB, the bigger hole is where the hook end of the stabilizer goes, and the smaller hole is where the screws go in. Now after screwing them into your PCB, this is where you're gonna to wanna to figure out which foam configuration you want to use. Now the board does come with case foam, which goes below the PCB and sits in the lower case, plate foam, which goes between the plate and the PCB, and the PE sheet, which goes on top of the PCB. Now this is all completely preference. I usually like to use the plate foam to even out the sound and get rid of any unwanted ping, and this is what it sounds like with just plate foam. Now the case foam is used to remove any hollowness, but that's not really an issue with this particular keyboard. Here's what just case foam sounds like. Now, if you want that marbly dampened sound, use the PE sheet with all the foams to give you a sound like this. Now that you've installed the stabilizer in the PCB and figured out what foams you want to use, we can move on to the next step. Now lay down the PE sheet. You will need to cut a couple of places so it can easily go over the stabilizers and under the wire, just like this. On top of this is gonna go your plate foam. Now make sure you line the plate foam up well and then place your plate on top. Once again, making sure that the foam is aligned and not in the way of any switches. Now there are four plate options to choose from. From softest to stiffest, it goes like this. Polycarbonate, palm, FR4, and then aluminum. My personal preference between these four are Palm and Aluminum. I like the sound signature that Palm gives you, and Aluminum is known for giving the most balanced sound with the solid space bar, but it's completely preference. Today, I'll go with Aluminum, since they didn't send me Palm. Now it's time to insert your switches. The switches I'm using in my build are the Owlab Neon Switch, which are a long pole and super clacktastic. The best way to do this is start at the corner so you know that your plate is in complete alignment. Make sure the pins are straight and press in from the center until the switch clicks in. You should see it coming through from the bottom. Once you have the four corners installed, continue to install all of the switches. If you go with the try mode, you can select to go with either a step caps lock or a standard key, as well as a split backspace or a standard 2U backspace. Just pay attention to the switch pin orientation on the PCB. Now the gaskets are something new that QK hasn't done before. They decided to go with PCB mounted gaskets versus the usual plate mount gaskets. This also allows for a plateless build, which basically means that you can build a keyboard without having a plate, which has a really interesting and unique sound signature. But it's not recommended to use on a hot swap PCB since the switches can then move around just a bit. Instead, you may want to pick up a soldered PCB as well. Now I found that the new gaskets are even easier to install than the gasket socks that they used to use and they don't fall out as easily. This new mounting style gives a really even and nice typing experience and I really like it. 
Next, you wanna install the battery cables to the daughter board and then take the one wider JST cable and install it to the PCB right here. There's a right and a wrong way to install it, so follow the pattern of the connectors. Now, if you're gonna go with the rotary knob, which I know a lot of you guys will, you will need to remove the badge holder that will come pre-installed in the board by removing these screws. Then you can take the rotary encoder and install it to the bottom case with the screws provided in the kit. I recommend installing the ribbon cable first before screwing it down. Quick note, installing the ribbon cable can be a bit tricky. Just make sure to lift the black tab up like this and push the cable in as far as possible with the blue side facing up. Once you feel it's all the way in and straight, lower the tab down and it should secure the ribbon cable. And do the same to connect it to the PCB and you're done. I find it the easiest to rest the PCB behind the bottom case to get these cables in a little easier. Now that you're all connected, lay down the assembly into the bottom case. The rubber gaskets will align with the gasket grooves in the bottom case. All you have to do is install the top case, which has only five internal screws. Install the rotary knob with the provided screw. Install your keycaps. Find a nice artesian to complement the color or season, like these holiday-inspired caps by Create Keeps that are really dope. I have a link to these in the description if you're interested. Now all that's left is to head on over to Monkey Type and live in bliss. Now, if you want to remap the keys, you're going to need to use the QK configurator for wireless PCBs. It's pretty straightforward to use though. Now the wired only PCBs will still be supported by VIA. Now, one of the coolest functions is that you have the ability to go wireless on this. Now to activate the function, first make sure that the switch on the PCB under the right shift is in the on position. Then press function and tab to cycle through the modes. When the light under Q, W and E light up, that means that you're in Bluetooth mode. Hold down the function and one of those three keys for five seconds and it will start blinking fast, indicating that you're ready to pair. Connect your device and you're done. If you decide to go wired, just plug up and press the function tab until the LED under the escape lights up and that tells you that you're in wired mode. Hope that build tutorial helped you out a little bit and if it did, drop a sub on the channel. Yeah. So overall, this keyboard actually surprised me. From a sound perspective, I like it a bit more than the QK60, which I already really liked. I would recommend using long pole switches since the flex cuts can make the board sound a bit thin or tape the flex cuts up like I've been telling y'all for months now. Now here's a quick comparison with no foam with and without the taped flex cuts. Yeah, tell me what you think of that in the comments below. So the case design is really clean. The glitter spray finish is nice and you can make it out if you have the right lighting on your desk. It's a little rougher to the touch compared to Anno and it's hard to say how it's gonna hold up over time. Typing feel and sound are all pluses. This is a QK board, so it's gonna sound best with all foams in my opinion. But I think no foams did sound pretty good as well. So yeah, in my opinion, this is the best keyboard that QK has made so far and I'm excited to see what they came out with in the future. That's all I got, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.